planted on June 11th, and it's uh, July 23rd or 24th now. And um, you can see some bare spots out here. It was kind of dry. Um, we planted a little late, but uh, two weeks later, I got some uh, drip irrigation hose on it, and I did uh, two passes on the whole thing. And uh, we had a, like a second growth. Um, some of the seed potatoes took with the water, and uh, so some of the smaller ones you see out here are from that second watering, or from that first watering that we did two weeks after they were planted. So I think early September, maybe September 9th, somewhere around in there, we'll start harvesting, and that'll probably be the reds that we'll harvest first. And then um, 20 days after that, about on the 29th or so, we'll start harvesting the, some of the fingerlings and uh, the German butterballs. And we'll probably be able to harvest, uh, you know, as we sell for about a month after that. Um, probably mostly the German butterballs and the fingerlings because they're in kind of different stages of development here. So the potato planting machine, talk about yeah, how, the, it, how did it do its job? Well, it's... The, the, mach the machine that we restored, that old Iron Age uh, potato planter, um, was just about flawless. I think the only um, problems we had was that the, uh, the horses only had one speed, which was kind of fast, kind of too fast for me because I was sitting on the back trying to feed it, make sure all the slots had uh, a, a seed potato in it, and it was spinning fast enough that I missed a few. So some of, the, some of the bare spots, especially at the beginning, we started to plant down there, is probably due to me not being able to keep up. But the, but the machine itself was, was, was perfect. We didn't have to, I think we made one or two adjustments at the beginning for covering the rows. We made, I think, one depth adjustment on the third row to get them a little deeper. And uh, so we're, I think everybody was really happy with the, with the planter. And uh, we have a digger to restore too, but I don't think I'm going to use it just because I think within the rows there's going to be um, a lot of potatoes that are ready to harvest, but a lot, a lot of potatoes that probably are, could wait another couple weeks, three weeks. So I think I'm just going to uh, hand pick as I go. We'll see. I may regret uh, with that decision later. But um, plus, we don't really have time to restore the, the old digger. So this is going to be the only machine planted, hand picked, lovingly restored potato patch in Sonoma County. And a few months from now, or a few years from now, people will come by and marvel that this is the only patch that was not planted to grapes. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know if you might want to pan up there, but a good portion of this land is, uh, is all relatives. Us and land that we own, and uh, we were asked to, to put this in grapes, and our neighbors up there who are relatives, they may be putting theirs into grapes too, but we didn't want to do that, and uh, so th all this land was going to be used for silage for the dairy, but the, they won't be doing that anymore, so they're thinking about putting that in grapes, and this area here would have been probably ended up in grapes too, but we decided to... Um, not do that. Um, maybe preserve it for pasture because I got a couple mules, and then so this year I try to you know see see how I did with the potatoes, and if it works out, maybe we'll do it again uh, next year. And uh, yeah, I think it's probably true that uh, it's been a lot of years since anybody's used horses in an old planter like that to plant potatoes. Um, you know, most normally all this would be done with a tractor. You'd plant them with the tractor. You'd hill them with the tractor, and you'd harvest them with the tractor. Um, and I'm doing all the hilling. That's that's where we're bringing the soil up onto the plants like this. Like here's one I haven't done yet. And I just bring soil up around the plant like this. And it's supposed to increase the amount of potatoes that we get. So I just hill them up both sides. And every day after work, I come out here and do this for a few hours. And uh, so that's another thing that's, you know, probably falls in the category of doing things the old-fashioned way. You know, uh, 
hardly anybody hills potatoes by hand anymore unless they, it's a small plot in their garden or anything, something like that. But I don't have to have a gym membership. I'm out here exercising for a couple hours every day. The thing that we've done almost continuously since they planted is set gopher traps. We've been doing that almost every day. And uh, since June 11th, I think, there's only been four days uh, when I haven't been out here. So I'm usually out here every evening after work, uh, you know, doing taking care of the patch.